Squeeze your legs together. Hey guys, it's Leslie from Glow Strong, a web series all about health, wellness, and good food. Today's episode is about mental clarity, and more specifically, mental health. We're really excited to have Jim with us from Understand Us. First, we'll be heading down to Pure Living for a hot yoga, and then we'll be making our way over to Smith & Best for a float tank, and then lastly, we'll be joining Giselle from Sprout Catering and cooking up a recipe for brain health. So we're here today at Pure Living Yoga with my girl Brenna and Brittany um, and then the fantastic, fabulous Jim Demery from Understand Us. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you uh, for joining us and for hosting us in your very lovely location. We love being here. It's a very warm atmosphere. Thanks for coming. Uh, so today what we're talking about is mental health. Um, or we're engaging everyone in our community to try and um, integrate different practices, methods, um, suggestions that will help them in their path to a clearer or healthier mindset. Yeah, for way? sure. Yeah, we know that everyone has different recipes for their own mental health. Right. Yeah. So we want to actually guide people to see what tools they can add to their toolbox in order mm. to find mental health. And we know that yoga is a big thing. Yes. I can say I've never done it in my life. Ever? So my anxiety is at an all time high <laughs> right now. But I want to add it to my toolbox, so I'm ready. I'm ready to learn we about it. We got you. Perfect. You're in the right place. I've done yoga. I haven't done yoga with you guys though. I've been around you plenty, but I haven't actually practiced here. So I'm excited for that, especially to get my sweat on because it is a hot yoga, right? Yes. I know that a lot of people use yoga for flexibility, mobility, mm -hmm. uh, strength, but what are some other reasons why people or how, I guess, they would use that for their mental health? That's a really good question. Um, Thanks. So, so I think just kind of going back into the purpose of the practice is actually really important. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that someone's doing physically with their body, we have an internal experience while that's taking place. So no matter how you're heat building, essentially, there's lots of practices you can do to heat build, whether it's like flow asana, whether it's on a bike, whether it's going for a run, whether it's at the gym, really doesn't matter in that aspect. Kind of the purpose of sweating or getting that heat building process happening for yourself is to get present in your body. Mm -hmm. So we all kind of feel those benefits after we've been in like a really good sweat sesh. Okay. You know, you can feel your body, you notice your heart rate again, you're present, you know I can always feel my body by the way because it's <laughs> always just there. <laughs> Anyways, continue. But as opposed to being, you know, like locked up here, I know this is something for myself. I've suffered from like crippling anxiety and depression and the ping pong ball back and forth. And for me, a really good sweat helps me get grounded and kind of like in the room or in the space or in time, like this present time and space. But where asana can kind of take it a little bit further is then we have this cooling portion of the practice. So that's where you'd have like your deep flexibility portion of the practice. So you kind of go from a strength building, then to a flexibility building. Asana is all the movement. Okay. So yin is asana. Um, when you're starting to get into like vinyasas, hathas, right. um, those, those heat building practices, once again, that's asana as well. Okay. So most people confuse asana with yoga. Okay. And yoga is actually the goal. Yoga is meditation ah. only. There's no movement in yoga. So it's kind of like I'm down. I'm down, with yoga. I'm down with yoga. It's really difficult, though. So it is your your method of entry into yoga is the same method of entry as let's say going to sleep. So from there, now if, let's say that you practice for a heat building portion, a cooling portion. Now you're a exhausted. Mm -hmm. You're ready to have a nap, and that is the op, like the ultimate and optimal place you want your mind and your body into. Time frame to go into a meditation or sleep. Yes. Gotcha. Meditation or yoga is lucid dreaming space. Okay. Daydreaming. And we do it all the time. Mm -hmm. 
people are like, I've never meditated. It's like all day long, every day you meditate. <laughs> Literally. Now I can put all that on time. my checklist. I meditate. Yeah. yeah. I also marinate, by the way. <laughs> I've heard you say that word. After, like after that word. a spin, you yes, marinate, marinate in your sweat. I marinate in the asana, for sure. <laughs> okay, so I have a question that needs to be answered here. So when you deal with mental illness, a lot of times you are your thoughts is what is actually attacking you. So a big fear that I've heard from people getting into yoga or meditation is that you're gonna be left alone with those negative thoughts without a distraction. So we use distractions to stop thinking about them. So in your own experience or any experiences you've heard of, have you heard of how someone addresses that fear or how they get over that? We do it all the time. Okay. Every single class. There is always somebody who comes into the room who's struggling with something. And there's methods of practice in meditation. So once your body's completely exhausted, then just noticing and referencing, okay, what are my resting thought patterns? What is it around? Am I battling something? So from there, there's actually techniques and practices. You can focus on different areas of the body. Um, and this is where methods and techniques of meditation come into play. Okay, so. well, let's go. We're gonna, let's go get set up. Let's get, yeah, let's no, get I'm started. Let's, let's get some more. I'm already sweating, so. Do I need the pens? Closing the eyes and removing yourself from some of the senses, some of the distractions. When you found that space, just begin to transition to noticing your breath. Trying not to control it right off the bat. It'll push through your hands, send your weight back. Keep your weight pushing back as you straighten your legs. Fine. Downward facing dog. Beautiful. Next. And on our next inhale, just extend your arms up and gaze up, stretching up and out of your hips. Now I want us to bring our hands to our hips and then just push the tailbone back. So you're gonna be in kind of this, Brenna likes to call it our sassy bottom position. And then keep that length through the heart as you exhale forward fold. My experience was interesting because I've always mm -hmm. thought that yoga was easy physically, but it was hard mentally. But what I found was uh, the physical workout is real. Like holding yourself up and tensing all those muscles and relaxing some of them and isolating those muscles and having balance at the same time, that was crazy. That's torture. I liked <laughs> That's it, why we it start torture. with that. <laughs> and then the mental side of it, it was, it was kind of cool because I've had massages, I've gone for a float, I've done a few things, but the relaxation by the end was, was real because I've never really done it after a physical activity like yoga. So I really felt the difference between the physical activity mm -hmm. and the mental relaxation. Well, thank you ladies. Um, deeply from the bottom of my heart of ha having us here, I really enjoyed it. I l always love um, any type I have the opportunity to calm my brain, but also challenge it at the same time. Um, Thank you, Jim. Yeah, it was fun. It was great. For it's being great. here with Thanks us. For and putting on those pants. Yes, these pants are great. And uh, for any of our viewers, if you have any type of comments or suggestions on what you do for your meditation pro um, process or what you like and what you dislike, we'd love to hear. Or you can list them below. Um, and we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, I vote we do the group hug. Group hug? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, out. oh, I have very sweaty armpits. Mm. <laughs>
Hey. Hello. Hello. Good to Hello. see you again. Good to see, Good to see Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming by. So we are here at Smith & Best. We're here with Jim Demery from Understand Us and Brad from Smith & Best, chiropractor and float specialist. And he's going to tell us all about um, how a float tank basically can help us in our quest of, of happiness. How about that? So, mm -hmm. oh, that's okay. float. That's float. <laughs> Um, so first things first, we're going to do a float. Tell us what what floating is. It's a tank, 12 inches of water, 1,000 pounds of Epsom salt. Um, the water is heated to within a couple degrees of skin temperature. Yeah. By doing that, the brain um, kind of forgets what's air and what's water. So after a little while, it feels like you're floating in space. The density of the water just makes you incredibly buoyant. Uh, we insulate for light and sound, and by doing that, um, your brain just kind of shuts off and it starts to approach what's called a theta state. Mm -hmm. Theta state is a deep meditative state. Uh, when the brain reaches uh, theta, that's kind of the body's repair phase. So what we see happening is a decrease in stress hormones, okay. particularly cortisol, which is a nasty one. And we get a bump in endorphins, which are happy chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, so I've never done one before. Mm -hmm. um, how long are they? What is the, like, how much do I have to commit to? How well, often should I go? That kind of stuff. It takes a little brain training to actually get used to shutting off, to yeah. relaxing. Some people have problems with that. So we suggest people start with a, a 60 minute session. Um, but then after that, you can start to add time as you feel more and more comfortable and the, the benefits increase with that. When you become a pro. I know yeah. that like any type of meditation, it's hard for me to even get like three minutes in. So. Yeah, well, and uh, flotation is kind of a cheater's uh, way to get into meditation because it removes all distractions. Mm -hmm. So with meditation, you're you're always fighting the outside world. You know, my back hurts, or I can hear the dog barking, and things like that. And this wipes out all of that. So it, it's easier to reach a meditative state. It doesn't replace meditation as a practice, yeah. but but it helps people kind of get into that. So who should float? Uh, well, all sorts of people. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that just come in for the stress relief, obviously, because mm -hmm. it's fighting those stress hormones. Um, but it's also good at decreasing healing time for sprain strains and, and fractures. So we get athletes to uh, come in uh, maybe post-race if someone's running a marathon or had a, a heavy competition, they'll come in and try to repair quicker. Or we get athletes that want to uh, improve their focus, improve their performance on the field uh, because they can visualize plays and run through them. We've talked briefly before about um, how we do um, our society operates at a very high level of stress yeah. for a longer period of time than we're really supposed to. Yeah. So being in that fight or flight concept mm -hmm. and what chemicals and hormones um, ha are produced in your body when you're in that for, for so long. Tell, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that side of things, like the, the science-y stuff? Yeah, well, the, uh, stress response is designed to be short-term. Okay. So it's fight or flight. We, we're attacked by an animal. The, the uh, the reaction allows us to try to survive a, a stressful situation. Yeah. Um, so we either run away or we defeat whatever's uh, in our way. The, the problem is with today's world, we have this undercurrent of stress all the time. So the stress response stays activated. So we get an increase in these stress hormones occurring in our body. Um, and that does everything from raise uh, blood pressure and heart rate and, and all sorts of things. But the big thing is your body's pumping out these stress hormones and it has to um, replace them all the time. So your body ups the uh, building blocks to manufacture hormones. And one of those building blocks is cholesterol. Right. So what we're seeing now is that, you know, in the past, people would say, well, don't eat eggs or other foods because it's got cholesterol in it. Mm -hmm. We found now that that has a very minimal yeah. impact on our actual cholesterol levels, but stress has a huge impact on it. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're starting to see our bodies breaking down. So heart yeah. attacks, obesity. Yeah, well, hardening of the arteries and yeah. changes in blood pressure and, and we see strokes and all sorts of things happening. So, you know, stress is probably the biggest killer that we're seeing yeah. now. It's so prevalent and it's easy to get stress. Just turn on the TV or anything like that. Yeah, and, and we bring the stress into our homes. So, so we're, we're, we're about to float. What are your, what are you feeling? How are you? Uh, well, I've never done it, and I always get a little bit anxious when I'm doing something I've never done before. Um, I'm a little claustrophobic. Okay. 
I'm worried that I'm not going to float and I'm going to sink and I'm, my self-esteem is going to be just trashed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just I'm a little bit like nervous for one hour left with only my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. I've never, I don't think I've done that ever. So I don't know, is there any advice you could give me to, <laughs> to get through that? Well, it is kind of daunting sometimes when you bump into yourself, but um, I think the big thing is for the claustrophobic thing, it's big. Like it's not like a tanning bed, it's a Volkswagen, so it's okay. big. Um, but as far as any other concerns, you're gonna float because the density of the water with all that salt is so high that everybody floats, no matter what. There's not a weight limit is what you're no, talking about. No, 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 no. And just the whole thing about trying to relax and stay calm and, and what are you gonna do for an hour? Um, I think the, the biggest thing is just try to focus on yourself. Uh, what I find really helps is to focus on your breathing. Just the constant kind of ebb and flow of your breath. Think of it as a wave coming in and out of your body and focus on that. And that really starts to decrease those, uh, those wandering thoughts and keeps you kind of focused on the, the situation at hand. When it comes to other specific mental illnesses, mm -hmm. so there's anxiety, depression, um, obviously, obviously multiples, is what feedback have you gotten from people that have suffered from these illnesses of what floating actually does specifically for them? Yeah, we've had some really good success uh, with different situations. Again, uh, the body starts to pump out those endorphins, your happy chemicals, uh, same ones that are associated with exercise. And what we're seeing now with depression and anxiety is, you know, in the past we've medicated all that stuff and what we're finding is that some of these these natural cures that you know our body has a built-in pharmacy it's just trying to get the body to release that uh, and flotation is is one of those ways that, that we can do that uh, there's been some research and some success with uh, PTSD as well um, and I've had quite a few clients that have specifically gone into the tank to kind of dredge up some, some bad memories and then work through them because you're in a safe calm warm cozy environment so you feel safe and and comfortable in there so it's the perfect environment to try to, to confront some of these fears or mm -hmm. situations that you run into very cool yeah i'll try to practice that today and i'll let you know how it goes all right perfect <laughs>
I think this could be something that someone could use mm -hmm. in their recipe or something that they could add um, if it works for them. Thanks, Brad, for having us. Thanks for hosting us You're in very your welcome. float tanks. We really appreciate it. Um, and thanks, Jim, for being on this journey with me. Um, of it's always been, it's always fun hanging out with you. We laugh a lot. And so let's keep the conversation going and see how we can get people to talk a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, all this. one of the most important things that we can do is have people share what they right. uh, do for their own mental health because that's a tool that someone else can use. So yeah. if any of you have any great ideas of what you uh, do to improve your mental health, comment below uh, with the hashtag understand us and we can share it with people. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Thank you. This season of Glow Strong is brought to you by GMS Health and Travel Insurance. From chiropractor visits to dental care to traveling the world, they make it easy and affordable for you to live well. Talk to your GMS insurance broker today or purchase coverage online now at gms.ca. Okay, so we are here with my good friend Giselle from Sprout Catering. So thank you for having us. Thank you so much for coming to my house. Everything that we're gonna talk about has something to do with either brain health or hormonal imbalance, um, and it's just basically all around healthy and good for you. Yes, totally. So what we're gonna start with today, um, we're gonna build a, a bowl. We have lots of options at the cafe for healthy salads, bowls. Um, so this is something we don't have on our menu but um, it's very easy to make, so you can watch Leslie and I do it, and um, you'll see how easy it is to make healthy food that's really good for you. Okay. So we're gonna start with um, some spinach as the base for our bowl. So spinach is really high in iron, really good for your skin, and when you look better, you feel better. Oh. So that's a really good, uh, good green to eat. And we're gonna use some blueberries. blueberries so yeah, um, at Sprout, I like to build all of my bowls and dishes in clusters. It's really okay. beautiful for presentation. You can see all the ingredients that you're gonna eat. So if you like to kind of pile it up um, in one section. Yeah, so blueberries are really good for brain health because they are full of antioxidants and antioxidants help with um, blood circulation and blood yeah. flow, which is really good for your brain. And then we have some seeds that we're gonna put in this dish. So seeds and nuts are really good. They're full of vitamin E. So that's another um, vitamin that's really good for your skin. Um, or same with cluster. Okay. Little Kinda clusters. Cluster, little yeah. seeds. They might fall through. That's okay. I it's don't make things ball. very pretty, by the way. Well, it, it looks very pretty. I'm a little rough and pebble. No, it looks great. <laughs> um, so yeah, these seeds, these are we've got some sunflower seeds here. Um, that's just like a mixture of pumpkin seeds, toasted sunflower seeds. We'll throw some of those in there too. Cool. Okay. Uh, and then we're gonna put some avocado in this dish as well. So if you wanna grab an avocado, Leslie, I'll cut this. So a really easy way to cut it is just cut it in half. Um, and a good way to know if it's ripe is if the little um, button thing on the top the comes off like effortlessly, it's, ah. it's ripe. It's, That's a really great tip. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. And then if you just use a sharp knife and twist the pit out mm -hmm. and then carefully just pop it off and we'll just scoop it out. So avocados, they're um, high in monounsaturated fats. Yes, yeah, so those are good fats. Yeah, and you want those. Yes. You want those in your body. They also yes. fill you up a lot more too. Totally. That's another thing is like people forget the actual, the macronutrition of, of fats. Um, they help to keep you fuller a little bit longer. Same with proteins, but your carbohydrates burn a little bit faster depending right. if it's a complex or simple. The avocados are really good for like lowering blood, your blood cholesterol. Yeah. And they also promote healthy blood flow, which is really good for your brain. Then we have some microgreens here. Yes. So we're gonna put some pea shoots on this. And so these are just like really great concentrated greens that are full of nutrients. Like this would be a pea if you let it continue growing, but instead microgreens and microherbs are harvested mm -hmm. very young. So all the nutrients that would eventually grow into a plant or a vegetable or a pea are like compact into in there. there. So they're a really great addition to salads, wraps, sandwiches. This is a pomegranate yogurt dressing we're gonna make for the salmon salad. And pomegranate is another fruit that's super full of antioxidants. It's like very highly concentrated. So I have a little bit of Dijon mustard here. 
and I'm gonna use um, about a, a teaspoon, a couple teaspoons of yogurt. And I wanted to put yogurt in this dressing as well as a little bit of apple cider vinegar because they're both ingredients that are really good for um, gut health. Yeah. And there have been a lot of studies to show that a healthy gut helps with a healthy mind. Probiotics. And there's a, the probiotics. There's right. a huge connection between gut and brain health. So a lot of things like depression, anxiety, those type of um, conditions are now being linked back to gut health. I've got some apple cider vinegar here. Cool. A um, little bit, a little <laughs> bit of that. And a whisk. And I'm gonna use, I'll hold this and you okay. can whisk. Okay. I'm right gonna now. use, yep, some agave. Okay. You can use honey too. It's just any natural sweetener is good. And I'm gonna put some pomegranate juice in here. Okay. Add some nice color. Mm -hmm. And delicious antioxidants. And we're gonna put some chia seeds in this. Uh -huh. um, do you want a spoon? How about a little teaspoon? <laughs> so we don't spill everywhere. Oh yeah. There you go. There you go. And we're gonna use avocado oil in this salad dressing. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna emulsify it by like slowly adding the avocado oil full of those really good fats. Emulsify is what? Um, when, when two ingredients that don't naturally belong together become one. Oh, and mustard is a really great like catalyst to use in salad dressings that help to emulsify <laughs> salad dressings. That's a cute little thing. That's something that like as a chef you could put on your wall for like, I don't know. What, emulsifying? Like, yeah, like two ingredients that don't belong together naturally and are. And then they become, they, they become, become one. one. Very yeah. cute. So we've got a nice like pink, delicious, looking salad dressing. So now we're gonna top with our salmon that we yes. cooked before, and we're using wild salmon. Yes, yeah, so this is wild salmon, and we've chosen to use this for this recipe today. Yeah, because um, wild salmon typically has a lot more of the omega-3 essential fatty acids that you don't find in farmed salmon. Mm -hmm. So in, the, in nature, in the wild, salmon eats seaweed and kelp and other fish, fish yeah. in the ocean that are full of those great fatty acids and you don't typically find it as much in farmed salmon. So wild salmon is always a little bit smaller yeah. than farmed because farmed salmon is is grown and made to yeah. create more and be more product. So um, you'll just notice that if you're looking, find smaller and it's a little bit more red sometimes That's too. What I was not, just not quite as pink, it's more of a red yeah. color. So Cool. So yeah, so we have this nice pink pomegranate salad dressing to complement our pink salmon. And I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit on top of the salmon. Mm -hmm. So now this salad, we're calling a salad. The super smart salmon salad. <laughs> How cute. So <laughs> cute. All these ingredients are really great for brain health. And when you eat good food, you feel good about yourself and you are what you eat. So if you nurture your body with nutritional food, there's a really good chance that you're gonna just feel good about that. Yeah. Thank you, Giselle, for having us today. It's Thank been wonderful you. being here and I always love your presence and oh, your love for food. Well, there you have it. Hit us up in the comments below if you've ever done a float tank before or participated in a hot yoga session. And we'd love to hear what your best practices are for your mental health. And as always, we'll be talking about all of these topics on our live Q&A next week, August 23rd. So head over to our Facebook page, hit us up with a like, and join into the conversation. Stay active.